Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you guys how to add a border to your photos in GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.10 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before we get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing which is a bestseller on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So this tutorial is actually a how-to article on my website. So you guys can check that out right now. I figured I would do a video version of this tutorial. And I'm gonna show you three different methods for this. I only show you one method in the article, but if you prefer to read how to do this, go ahead and do so. I'm also using a free image from Pixabay. You can click this free download option and download this image for free. So I'll minimize my browser window here and that is going to bring up my GIMP window. So we're going to be using three different methods for creating borders here. The first is going to be the easiest, the fastest, and that is going to be using script foo. The second is going to take you slightly more time and that's going to be using a layer mask. The third method is my recommended method. It might take you a little bit more time. All of these methods are going to take you a couple minutes at most, so nothing's going to take you that long to do. Uh, but the third method is going to be preserving uh, or knowing the overall dimensions of your image you want the image to be and also knowing the final dimensions of the image that you want to print to. So it's going to be the best method for printing your image. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. Let's go ahead and dive in and I'm going to start by opening up the image I want to use here and I can do that by going to file and I can either go to open or open recent and right here is my image file I want to use so I'll click on that and I'll hold control and zoom out. So we'll start with the script foo method and to access that I'm gonna hit the forward slash key on my keyboard and that's gonna bring up my search actions box here and I'm gonna type add border and here is my add border option. So if I double click that, that's gonna bring up the script foo add border feature and border X size is going to be the size of your border on the X axis. Border Y size obviously will be on the Y axis and you have border color here so this is set to black right now you could set this to whatever color you want by clicking on that i'm going to go with black and click ok the delta value on color is going to be the little shading that's going to pop up in the corner of your border that's going to give your border sort of like a 3d effect and you'll see what i mean when we apply this so it's going to apply a little bit of shading there so i'll click ok and that's going to add my border here so now if i hold control and zoom in First off, you can see what I'm talking about with the delta. So here there's a little bit of shading right there. And the second thing I want to point out, and I want to make sure that everybody has their rulers over here set to pixels. And let me just click off of that unit down here. If I hover my mouse right where this border is, and I'm eyeballing down here the second value, you can see that that should be right around 50. That means that this border is going to be 50 pixels wide. And the same thing over here, except now I'm gonna look at the left value here. So if I hover my mouse, it's giving me a rough measurement there. So just make sure that your measurement matches up with the setting you were trying to go for in the script foo. So I'll hold control and zoom out, and I can actually hit control shift J, and that's going to center up my image here on my image window. So that's the first option there using the script foo. The second option is going to be using a layer mask. So let's go ahead and open up our image again. So I'm gonna to go to file, open recent and choose my image and hold control and zoom out and I am using that mouse wheel to zoom in and out here so what we need to do is we need to create a selection area around the entire outside of the image and then we're going to shrink that selection area down based on the size of the border that we want so again this is not a recommended method this is just a quick and dirty method here but I'm going to start by hitting control a and that will select everything on my image window here or I can go to select all and you can see the shortcut key there is control a at least on a windows and after you do that you should have a selection area around your image next i'm going to make sure i have an alpha channel or a transparency layer below my image so i'm going to right click on here and go to add alpha channel so now we should have transparency below our image which means if we erase our image whatever we erase is going to show up as transparency so now what i need to do is come over here to select and come down here to shrink 
And if I bring this up, you can see now we can change the units that we want to shrink this by. And we're going to shrink this by whatever amount we want our border width to be. And we're only going to factor in one uh, side of the image with the border. So in other words, if we want this to be a half inch border all around the image, then you're going to shrink this down by a half inch. So I'm going to come over here and change my units to inches. And you guys can, of course, change this to whatever unit you want. And I already have this set to half an inch, so I just typed in 0.5 here. And now when I click OK, that will shrink my selection area down by half an inch on all sides of my image. Now I'm going to add a layer mask to this based on the selection area. So I'm going to right click on my image, go to Add Layer Mask. And under Initialize Layer Mask 2, I'm going to choose Selection. Make sure the Invert Mask option is unchecked, and then click Add. And that's going to mask everything outside of my selection area I just created. Then I can hit Control Shift A to select none. And now I can add whatever I want underneath this layer that we created with the layer mask. And that's going to show up as our border. So we can add a solid color, a pattern, another image, whatever you guys want to do. So create a new layer. And I'm just going to keep this simple. I'm going to go with my black border we've been using. So I could set this as my background color for the fill width option. And just make sure you switch this over so that black is your background option. Or you can always change this back to foreground color if that's what color your black is set to. But I'll click OK. And that's going to add this black here. I'm going to click and drag this below our original layer, below the image layer in release. And this is more of like a dark gray, so I can actually just change this to more of a true black. Grab my bucket fill tool, switch the colors, and then we'll fill that in. And now we have a true black there. So that's the second method there. It didn't take too long. Again, none of these methods take too long. The third method is the one I recommend, especially if you're going to be printing this. The reason being is you have more control over the final size of the image. Plus, you don't encroach upon the original image. So you may have noticed in this method, for example, that we had to encroach upon the original composition in order to add that half inch of a layer here around our image. So we lost everything going on over here in the photo. So the third method here is going to keep that from happening while also giving us control over the units we want to set the border to. So of course, for the third method here, I'm going to open up our image one last time. So I'll go to File, Open Recent. And I'm going to choose that image we've been using. And I'll hold Control and zoom out. So let's say, hypothetically, we want to print this or we want to export this as a 5 inch by 7 inch photo. That's a pretty standard photo size. In this case, because this is a landscape photo, which means it's wider than it is tall, we're actually going to want it to be 7 inches wide by 5 inches tall. So we're going to keep that in mind while we're creating our border. And you always want to know the dimensions of your image first when you're using this method, because everything is going to be tailored to that dimension. The second thing you want to know is the size of your border. So in this case, we're going to stick with a half inch border. And that means we need to add an inch total to all areas of the image. But we also need to maintain the 5 by 7 total size of the image. So that's the image inside plus the border on the outside. All of that added together needs to be 5 by 7. And it all needs to maintain that 5 by 7 aspect ratio. And our image might be different than that aspect ratio. And that's something we're going to check here. So we're going to start by actually scaling this down first. So remember, we need a half inch border. So we need to take away an inch, which means if this is going to be larger than 5 by 7, or if it's already 5 by 7, we need to scale it down so that we at least take away an inch from one of the dimensions of this image. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. I know I might be getting away from you right now. But let's just come over here to Image. Scale image, and I'll change my unit here to inches. So this image right now is 6.4 by 4.257 inches. That's probably off of our aspect ratio of 5 to 7. So what I need to do is I need to scale one of these sides. So I'm going to scale the height down to 4 and hit the Tab key. And that will automatically scale my width down to 6 and some change here. So remember, we want this final to be 4 by 6. The reason I didn't scale the height down to 6 is because this is the larger of the two dimensions. So if I scale this to 6 and hit the Tab key, the smaller of the two dimensions is going to be below 4. And if it's below 4 inches, which is what we need the height to be, then that means we're going to lose some quality here or this isn't going to be the right size. So always scale down your smaller of the two dimensions. So I'll scale that one down to 4. Hit the Tab key and let this one automatically adjust. Make sure this chain link icon is set here. And I'll click Scale. 
So now our image is scaled down, but our dimensions are not completely correct. Again, we need it to be four by six. So I'm gonna come over here and grab my crop tool. And then I'll come down to my tool options and make sure I check the fixed aspect ratio option. And I'm gonna type in the aspect ratio of six colon four. And the reason I did six first and four second is because again, this is going to be a landscape image. So we need it to be wider. And now I'm gonna draw my crop here and this is going to give us the proper dimensions or the proper aspect ratio we're looking for right now of six to four. The issue though is that the crop area has shrunk a little bit because I drew it a little bit smaller than the entire height of my image here. So if I come down here to size, you could see if I switch this over to inches, this is going to be less than four by six. So that's one thing you wanna double check before you crop. You need the crop size to be four by six inches or this won't work. So what I'll do is I'll just increase the size of the crop as much as I can here. And now you can see it's set to four to six. And now you can see this is set to four inches and six inches. So there's only a little bit of wiggle room here that we need to get rid of. So I'll move this one way or the other because the difference is so small between the crop and the current image size. And then I'll just double click here to apply the crop. And you can double check your image size if you want by going to image, scale image, and come over here, change this to inches. And now you can see we've got a four by six inch image. So I'll exit out of that. That means we have an inch total to work with. So now we can add our half inch border. We're gonna do that by coming over here to image, canvas size. And now I'm gonna come over here and change this to inches. So here we have four by six, our current canvas size. I'm going to unlink the chain link icon here. So that's linked right now. I'll just click to make sure that's unlinked. And now I'm just gonna change the width to seven and the height to five. So that's gonna give us a five by seven inch image. And the reason I had to unlink the chain link icon is because the aspect ratio of five by seven is different than the aspect ratio of four by six. Now I'll come over here and click the center option. And if I come over here and I change the offset unit here to inches, this should give you a value of 0.5 for both the X and the Y. If your border size is something different, this value here should match the size of your border in whatever units you're trying to use. And I'll come down here and you can actually change the fill width here. So right now it's set to white. We could change that to foreground color, which will be black. Or we could change this value to transparency and that will allow us to put any color behind there and any pattern or an image. So I'll just go with transparency. That's gonna give us more options and I'll hit resize. And now we have a border around our image, a half inch border. You could double check those measurements by holding control and zooming in. And you could change the value of your rulers here to inches. Come up here, hover your mouse over here. And you can see that right value there should say 0.5, which it does. And then this left value here, if I hover on this side, should say 0.5, which it does. So hold control and zoom out. Hold my space bar here. And then I'll create a new layer. And I'll just keep this one named black border and black is our foreground color. So I'll change this to foreground color and click okay. Click and drag that below our image. And now we have a black border here. So of course I could add any color behind this image because we have a transparent border. And that means I could add white to this, a pattern, a gradient, an image. Really the sky's the limit. And we're doing all this without losing really any of the original composition here because that border is not encroaching on our image unless you cropped out a decent amount of the photo that's the one way you could lose a decent amount of the composition but then again you want to make sure that you set whatever image size you're going to print this to relative to your original image size that way you don't have to crop too much of the image out all right so that's it for this tutorial hopefully you guys liked it if you did please subscribe to my youtube channel at youtube.com slash davies media design you can visit my website at daviesmediadesign.com you can enroll in my best-selling gimp 2.10 master class from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy and you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.